Hey guys, it's Nate Hale with the Rapscallion Brigade, and uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, a few things. I'm going to look at a few articles and uh, even watch a couple of videos here. And really, just thinking about the controversy surrounding the Detroit Become Human game, and we're, we're going to talk about some of these things. But I wanted to really open the video by discussing something that I think it would help everyone if they could realize this and that is the fact that video games are not toys uh, they are a legitimate form of entertainment for adults and uh, you know movies television books music uh, they they all all of these mediums have uh, addressed some difficult themes and in each of these cases people recognize that there are some works that are suitable for kids and some that aren't some with more adult themes and uh, they categorize movies music books uh, in this way uh, some movies are children's movies some movies are are more adult themed movies and same thing with books and music, TV shows, and parents are are usually pretty good about not letting their young children see things they shouldn't or have to deal with things that, that maybe they're not old enough to deal with as far as certain themes in movies or shows. And uh, for some reason, uh, people do not view video games as a legitimate form of entertainment. I think most of most of the world seems to think that only kids play video games and their view or their idea of a video game is either Pac-Man or the original Super Mario Brothers and they they view them as toys rather than a legitimate form of entertainment you look at this graph here I want you to notice something. Well, first, let's read what's on the right side. This graph, let's see, right over here. This graph presents the results of an annual survey among a representative group of video game users regarding their age. And, of course, it says in 2017, 27% of the responding video gamers were 18 to 35. That's not the number that I'm concerned with. Look at this graph. You have 29% of people that play video games are under the age of 18. That means you have 71% of gamers in this survey, now there may be some people that are, are being left out, but in this survey, and as a general rule this is probably pretty close, the people that I know, uh, most of the gamers that I know are older, they are adults, and so, but you look at this, 71% of gamers are above the age of 18. But for some reason, the the world uh, as a whole views video games still as a, a toy. And we don't treat any other form of entertainment like this. Nobody says uh, to the adult walking into the movie theater, what, what are you doing? Don't you know that movies are for, for kids? You should be reading books. You're an adult now, you know. Nobody treats it like that. But for some reason, uh, video games just come with this stigma, uh, as if they're child's toys. And people, I think, for the most part, don't really realize games have grown up. I began playing in the second grade. I, had, I got my first gaming system. It was the Nintendo Entertainment System. And sure, most all of the games were kitty. They were cartoony, and that was because of the graphical limitations of the time. And most of the people who were playing games, I'm sure, in the uh, early to mid 80s, late 70s even, were probably kids for the most part. But all of those kids have grown up now, and they've stuck with it. They are they love the hobby, and they're uh, they are now adults, and they seek content that is more mature themed, just like an adult who grows out of cartoons or uh, or grows out of the the stage in their life where they're watching uh, the Disney Channel or Nick Jr. and then they begin to seek out other shows or movies that uh, 
more piques their interest as adults. And nobody looks at them and says, well, you know, you you really got to grow up. You got to get out of that. You got to start uh, reading books or you've got to stop uh, consuming the, that form of entertainment altogether because that's a child's thing. For some reason, we have that uh, that view of video games. But why are we talking about all this? Why, why are we even having to discuss the fact that most gamers are adults and video games are a legitimate form of entertainment just like any other form of entertainment that any adult with the freedom of choice chooses to do in their spare time. Um, why are we even having to mention this? Well, there's a controversy uh, about Detroit Become Human, and here we're going to look at a couple of articles. Uh, Detroit Become Human Under Fire for Controversial Domestic Abuse Scene. Now, before we get into this, I understand there are some things uh, that are hard to watch. There's movies, uh, music with explicit themes and lyrics, uh, music uh, or movies rather that, that have covered topics or based on true stories, books based on true stories that when you read those books, it's just hard to read. It's hard to think that there are people out there that would do things like this. And domestic abuse is one of those things. It's, it's, it's indefensible. It's something that is reprehensible, something no one should do, and something that no one should ever defend. And uh, I think that part of the controversy here, though, with Detroit Become Human, stems from that fact that there are people, and the people who are going to read some of their quotes, you can tell they have no concept of how this game works or what it's about, and they view games as toys for kids, and that's their problem. Uh, that's the problem they have with it. They think this toy for kids is pushing domestic abuse. That's horrible. And if that were the case, of course that would be horrible. But you, you, need, the whole, you need the whole context. You need all of the information before you, you go and attack something. So let's just get into this. Uh, children's campaigners and a UK member of parliament have criticized upcoming PlayStation 4 exclusive Detroit Become Human for its controversial domestic abuse scene. At Paris Games Week in October, Detroit hit the headlines after Sony released a trailer for the game in which scenes of domestic abuse and child abuse feature heavily. In the video, we see android housekeeper Cara, or Cara thrust into an uncomfortable domestic abuse situation. And she's charged, it says, with taking care of a young girl who is attacked by her belt-wielding single father. And the video tries to get the point across that you're able to change the course of events at multiple points in the scene. And the video shows that one of the potential moments sees the young girl shoot her father as he chases Kara. Now, this is... Obviously, like we said before, some things are just they're hard to watch. There are some things that we don't we don't like to think about. There are some some themes and th some things that show up in, like I said, movies, books, music that are are difficult. Um, certainly, you don't want to take these things lightly. And we're gonna watch this video. We're gonna watch this trailer. And uh, I want you to know that it's it is horrible watching this play out. But after we watch this. We're going to look at something else that I, I hope you will see and understand, I guess, maybe the context of what's going on here and the uh, the game developer's total vision for the theme of this game in the first place. Think about what this game is about and these uh, artificial intelligences, these androids that are beginning to feel things. They're beginning to to grow into their own and they're they're really fighting for their place in society and there are some some deep themes going on in this game that uh, could be discussed at length about uh, humans and our emotions and if if the day comes when we do have android maids or butlers or uh, androids become more prevalent and people begin owning androids like they own playstations today and so i have an android to help me around the office or to help me clean the house and it's 
it's lifelike and it's it's almost like a human and it may come to a point where artificial intelligence reaches a point where we begin to have these discussions about at what point is something alive and and we already see things like uh, Blade Runner and of course recently Blade Runner 2049 that's discussing some of these things about uh, at what point does something uh, cease to be synthetic and begin to be more human now there's obviously uh, a, a point there at which you have to make a distinction if something is a machine that's been created and it's not human but that's what these games are or this game in particular is uh, is looking at is these androids though they are machines they are creations uh, they are if they become self-aware and and then they are taking a journey from being a machine that just does what it's told to becoming self-aware and wanting rights uh, and that's completely possible with uh, artificial intelligence that one of these days that might be the case and so he's he's kind of uh, covering these themes or delving into this idea of, of what would their fight be like and what kind of decisions they might have to make uh, as they become uh, more sentient or more self-aware and you're gonna see that in this scene where this Android has to begin to make decisions and there's a point at which you see that you go from being a machine that just does what it's told to okay now I'm I'm reasoning things out and I see that what I'm being told to do is not the right thing to do and I'm choosing to do something else besides that and that's a like I said that's almost a whole other discussion but it it is pertinent to this discussion about the controversy surrounding this particular scene and this particular game there's more going on here than what people who are sounding off about it realize and we're going to talk about that let's watch this this video and uh, then we'll talk some more about it two weeks so the place is a mess we do the housework the washing and cook the meals that's alice we look after her homework bath all that crap got it right away todd are you going to school today I'm sure we used to be friends before I was reset. Maybe we can be friends again. You shouldn't mess around with my stuff. It makes me nervous. I'm sorry, Todd. Maybe you think this is easy. Maybe you think it's my fault your fucking mother took off. Fucking whore walked out on me for a fucking account. You back here? You stay there. Don't you dare fucking move. Alice! Daddy's very mad. All right, so you see there that uh, even within this trailer, it says things could have been different, and there, there's a reason that it says that. And the whole point of this game is that you you make decisions, and the decisions that you make are going to decide are, are, are going to decide how the story begins to play out. And so some of the things that you just saw there, yeah, that's hard to watch, and that guy is being ridiculous, and that's somebody that you you'd want to. You'd want to, to harm him in the worst way if you were there in person uh, or do anything you could do to stop that situation because that, that's just reprehensible. 
and it stops the the narrative there and says things could have been different and now it's going to go back and show these are some of the choices you could have made that might change the scenario or change the outcome and uh, these are the choices that this android is making when it's told to stand down you've been commanded it already mentioned that she'd been reset so uh, maybe it's the case that before she had gotten out of line or done something that that the owner told her not to do or, or he told her to do something and she refused and so she got sent back and reset so she would be more obedient and, uh, and so now that she's come back and you you saw her talking with the little girl and, and saying, I'm sure we were friends before I was reset and uh, hoping the little girl will, will trust her. And you see where the girl does trust her, hands her that key. And the android here, Kara, is putting things together. And you can see that the wheels are turning. And she's watching these things play out, and she obviously, you can see she's obviously uncomfortable. She has a problem with that. And when it goes back now and shows you some of the different choices you could have made, uh, you'll see how the story would have changed. You see there, the, the outcome of that particular scenario was that the little girl kills Todd, kills her dad. And obviously that's another thing. You, you don't want to have something like that have to happen. You'd rather not see that type of scenario. It's an uncomfortable scenario, an uncomfortable scene to watch. Uh, no little girl wants to have to shoot their daddy. Uh, but here it, he's brought it to that. He has refuse to do the right thing and he is just pressing 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 and the only thing that eventually stops him is that and while you hate for that to have to happen and this is a hard scene to watch my point is that the the themes of this game and the intention of this game uh, are are set up in a way that you can understand why this is included. If you look at the, the plot line and the things that are going on in this game, you understand why this uh, is a, a situation where Kara is maybe at a turning point and she has some real decisions to make. And of course this is a more adult theme, it's a more mature theme. And you don't want kids to have to see this and you're, you're not going to buy your eight-year-old this game for Christmas and uh, and let them play through this we're going to see another video here in a second that tells more about the story but just like you wouldn't buy uh, a graphic violent action movie or horror movie and sit your kid down in front of the TV and say okay let this be your digital babysitter for a couple of hours no, you're going to find a, a cartoon or a Disney movie or something that, that they enjoy, something that's suitable for them. If you're talking about movies, you're going to do that. If you're, if you're talking about books, you're going to buy them children's books that uh, will help them learn and it's their, more their speed. and It has colorful pictures and, and easy words because that's suitable for children. You're not going to buy them things like uh, War and Peace or Les Miserables. Uh, you're just not going to hand a toddler that and say, okay, here, have a ball, because that's not for them. And not all video games are for kids, just like not all books are for kids, not all movies are for kids, not all music is for kids. But for some reason, we get up in arms about a game that has a little bit of violence, a little bit of mature themes, uh, because it's for kids. It's for kids. And if you look at some of the things that are said about this you have uh, a couple of quotes here we have uh, 
UK newspaper The Mail on Sunday is stirring up controversy around upcoming PS4 exclusive Detroit Become Human. The paper has obtained quotes from Childline, NSPCC, and the chairman of the Culture, Media, and Sports Select Committee, who have called for the upcoming title developed by Quantic Dream to be banned from the UK due to its depiction of domestic violence. Um, now there is a, a, a paragraph here, ignoring the many films, books, and even music that deal with violence against children. Dame Esther told the right-wing paper, Violence against children is not entertainment. It's not a game. It's a real nightmare for thousands of children who have to live through these kinds of scenarios. The makers of this game should be thoroughly ashamed. I think it's perverse. Who thinks beating a child is entertainment? No one. No one thinks beating a child is entertainment. And in this game, you do not beat a child. Andy Burroughs, it says, who is the associate head of Child Safety Online at the NSPCC, also said, any video game that trivializes or normalizes child abuse, neglect, or domestic violence for entertainment is unacceptable. I agree. As a matter of fact, any medium, movies, books, TV shows, music, video games, any of these that trivialize or normalize child abuse or domestic violence for entertainment any of those would be unacceptable but that's not what this game is doing it's not trivializing it at all and, and these people are acting like you take control of the person who's beating the child as if you're racking up points as you beat the child that's not what's going on here there are some mature themes that are woven into this game and when you're talking about this this android who is experiencing this and having to make decisions about what to do and these are deep emotional things for this android to have to deal with to choose to disobey her owner and protect this child and that's the the plot line or the through line of the game is this type of uh, story arc for the androids where they're basically going from robots to something a little more human and that's the whole point of the game and there's going to be a lot of things in in the life of an android if this were a real thing there would be a lot of things they would see on a daily basis that they might not understand immediately and that they might have to uh, process and begin to make decisions about and uh, the the thing that bothers me is the people that are are jumping on this game and calling for it to be banned I don't think they even understand the context of what's going on here now, I don't think they have any kind of grasp about uh, who plays video games and the fact that of course there are some games that are not at all suitable for children that's why you don't sell them to children if they're under a certain age and you still have parents who will walk into GameStop or another store and uh, the, the guy or, or girl behind the counter will say, I'm sorry, ma'am, we can't sell your kid this game. It's for 18 and above, and it includes mature themes and violence and, and language and sex. And the parent just says, okay, I'll buy it. Well, you can't take that position and then complain about what your child might be seeing. Okay, some games are not suitable for children, just like some movies are not suitable, some books music not suitable for children. Here he says conservative MP Damien Collins, who is chairman of the Culture, Media, and Sports Select Committee, said it is completely wrong for domestic violence to be part of a video game regardless of what the motivation is. Okay, well if you're going to take that stance, then you have to take the same stance about movies, books, music, TV. You have to you have to call on shows like Law and Order SVU to be banned, to be done away with, because that type of violence, uh, you, and, and in Law and Order SVU, almost every single episode, at the beginning of the episode, you have a depiction of someone being raped, or or having a, having a situation where someone is being abused, and most of the time to the point of being killed. So if you're going to take this stance, you're going to have to take that stance across the board, and you're going to say, we, we, don't, we don't need shows like that. We don't need movies about this. 
the thing about that is is the more we can discuss it the more we can talk about these these themes maybe we can move towards helping people who may be in this situation or bringing awareness to the problem but he says here it's it's dangerous to plant the seed in people's minds that the way to deal with abusers is to use violence against them well that's not exactly the seed being planted there what I saw and I hope you saw in that scene was that, that they were trying to just get out of that situation and when there was no other options you see that the father got shot he said it's counterproductive and could put them in even more danger when we look at this the defending the controversial trailer at the time and this is what the, the games creator said and, and listen to what he says and you get a sense of why a scene like that is in this game now, you don't choose to talk about domestic abuse it's not like I was like oh let's write a scene about domestic abuse it's not how it works he says, when you're a writer, you talk about things that move you, that you feel really deep inside you, that's something that moves you, and you hope it's, it'll move people too. You know there are two ways you can do this. Oh, let's do something cool, and let's have someone beaten by a man. That's one way of doing things, because people are going to write about it, and it's going to sell my game. That's one way of doing it. He said, the other way is to say, I'm working on something important something meaningful and something moving and there's a meaning behind it there's a strong story I need to tell it goes through dark moments but I think the story I have to tell it uh, I have to tell it he said as it's something important for me and I think when you do this you do your work as an author you do your work as a writer you go into dark places in order to create something positive about it. It's never a conscious decision to say, let's talk about something cool and violent. No. He said, I want to talk about something moving and meaningful. That's my job as a writer. I'm the first judge, and I hope that people will feel the same. Just for a little more context, this was the E3 video uh, E3 2017, Detroit Become Human's Android Revolution can be one of hope or terror. And that's the main theme of the game. You can choose how you go about bringing this revolution. And uh, there's a video here you're going to see. And uh, we're, we're going to watch this one. And you get a, a sense of the, the themes and the plot line of this game. And you can see very quickly watching this video how it's uh, it's not it's not really geared towards kids, and it's not intended for for young children to be playing. It is an an adult, mature story. And so let's look at this uh, this video that was played, like I said, at E3 2017. Hold on, just a little while longer. Hold on, just a little while longer. Hold on, just a little while longer. This is a night our people will remember. There are five cyber life stores across Detroit. We're gonna attack those stores and set our people free. That's what we are to them. Just merchandise on display in a shop window. Let's get them out. We'll stick to the plan. Neutralize the alarm systems and secure the area. There's 10 minutes until all our teams attack. You're awake now. We gotta go. 
What? We can't just leave our people behind. It's too late. If we stay here, we're gonna get shot. North, our people need us alive. There's nothing else we can do. Marcus! That's about to change. I'm gonna send the humans a message. My name is Marcus. Just like you, I was a slave. But then I chose to open my eyes. To take back my freedom and decide who I wanted to be. Now I have come to tell you that you can be your own masters. We're with you! I'll follow you, Marcus! I'm with you, I'm Marcus. With you Marcus! I'll follow you, Marcus! <laughs> then follow me! Interrupt this broadcast with breaking news. Police report that pro-android graffiti was found in the neighborhoods of CyberLife stores. Given the facts, it's pretty clear these attacks are linked to the deviant video message broadcast recently from the Stratford Tower. Different locations were hit in what seems to be a coordinated attack. This is an alarming situation. Could our machines now be turning against us? Violence is the only language humans understand. Numerous storefronts have been broken with cars vandalized and set alight, leaving many Detroit neighborhoods in chaos. We're getting reports that hundreds of androids have been stolen from CyberLife stores. My name is Marcus. I am one of them. This is our story. Okay, so you can see what uh, what kind of themes are in this game. And Marcus there had choices to make. Now he he made some decisions in this particular trailer that caused it to take a turn for the more violent. And there are some things that uh, they've said about the game and the uh, the design of it that that show that it doesn't have to be uh, that way. That you don't have to you don't have to to make the decisions that lead to uh, that type of violence. Um, Let's see here. Let me get down here to uh, in Detroit's Capitol Park. Marcus breaks into an Android store, waking up some new friends and giving the rousing speech that Sony showed in its E3 conference. 
Marcus is committed and he genuinely wants a better life for androids like himself. After an explosive heist to disable the store's security and crash inside to gain some new allies, Marcus decides how to send his message to humanity. He picks a symbol to represent the resistance, but Marcus has a more substantial choice to make. Will this rebellion be a peaceful one or one of violence? In our demo, in our demo, he chooses violence. And almost immediately, chaos sets in. And the previous, he says, idyllic winter scene is soon full of broken shop windows, burning cars, toppled statues, and digital billboards that have been hacked to deliver the message of the resistance. And soon, the androids initiate a blackout, leaving only the glow of the fire and their digital graffiti to light the park. Their message has been delivered with gusto. And late in the demo, Marcus, it says, seems to hesitate. Another android named North looks around at the chaos around him, around them, and now the humans have no choice but to listen. She tells Marcus they'll be afraid. Fear breeds hatred. He says, I'll take hatred over indifference, she replies. And uh, it's moments, he says, like these that define the power of your decisions and the care that Quantic Dream has put into making these characters believable. Marcus wants to be in charge uh, of his own destiny, but his freedom doesn't necessarily need to be motivated by violent means. Ultimately, he can become a truly powerful antagonist for humankind, the leader of a resistance that proves it can do a lot of damage in a very short time. Marcus is shaped by your decisions in a special quantic dream way that feels sim simultaneously familiar and unexpected. Detroit is certainly not heavy rain or beyond, but it's easy to see how the DNA from those games has shaped this vision of the future. And so you, you get the idea here. That what's, what's going on is that you have some very serious decisions to make, and the, the overall theme of the game is these androids, as you saw in that, saw in that trailer, they, they're waking them up, and he's trying to recruit them to the cause and the fact that they have a cause that they are moving from like like she said they view us as merchandise and uh, I can imagine how some someone or something that has uh, evolved to the point of having a mind of its own and some feelings of its own and you go see your kind on the store shelf or behind glass and you you realize that you're you're not seen as as a person you're not seen as something that that has emotions or feelings you're seen as merchandise you're seen as a machine and uh, the struggle in your own mind uh, that you might have uh, the feelings that you might have uh, upon realizing that and it's an interesting concept and I'm looking forward to playing the game and I, I hope that it's I hope that it's not banned, and I hope that they don't start they don't start taking out a lot of things because some people might be upset or have misconceptions about it. Uh, I, I hope that they leave uh, their vision in and uh, allow this game to be uh, what it's intended to be. And uh, I thought we'd talk just a little bit about this controversy tonight, but I think a big part of it stems from the way people view video games. Uh, most people still think video games are toys for children, and that's probably a whole other video that we could do about why that's not the case, but it plays into why this is such a controversy. Um, I understand that some of these things are hard to talk about, and certainly a lot of the things that we just saw in the videos that we watched about this game Certainly you don't want children seeing those things or being influenced by those things. Uh, there are some things children just shouldn't have to deal with uh, when, they're, when they're younger. So that's why we as parents need to be vigilant and involved in what our children play or watch or what they experience. And uh, you know, while they're young, we make decisions for them. They're just kids. We're, we're the adults. You know, they're, uh, they're not the bosses of us. So we have to we have to make decisions on what's going to be 
best for them or what we feel might be best for them. And then when they reach adulthood, they can make their own decisions. That's the way this works. But when a child comes into a store and tries to buy Grand Theft Auto, and they're obviously 9 or 10 years old, and uh, you know the, the clerk behind the counter says, I'm sorry, I can't sell you this. You're not old enough. And then the child walks off in a huff and brings their mom or dad back, and mom or dad goes ahead and buys the game, even though they've been told it's not suitable for children. It has a rating that, that, that notes this. And it's, it's full of things that children don't need to be seeing. And that's why we're not supposed to sell it to anybody under 18. And the parent goes ahead and says, well, I'll just buy it for them. Uh, that's, that's part of the problem. It's that your parents aren't being parents. If your child's asking for a game for a birthday, for Christmas, or just for, you know, this week. Maybe their allowance this week is enough to get a game. And they want you to take them and, and buy them a game. Be involved in what your children are purchasing and playing and be informed about video games as an industry, as a form of entertainment and uh, you know, just pay attention to what your children are doing. And just like any other form of entertainment, you would, you know, hopefully you would uh, try and steer them towards things that are suitable for them and that you're not letting them watch movies or read books or listen to music that, that is not suitable for them either. And so I, I would hope that you would know enough about the situation to be involved. And then uh, as they grow older, they'll become interested in more, uh, more mature themes and more intricate plot lines. And uh, that's going to be the case across all mediums. But until then, let, let your children play children's games and watch children's movies and read children's books. And please, please, please get informed find out about video games as a form of entertainment don't just write it off or shrug it off as toys for kids if you do that you do yourself a disservice and you certainly do the video games industry a disservice thank you for taking the time to watch this video i know it was long but uh, it's just something that i wanted to talk about i hope that we can start a discussion in the comments and that you'll you'll be involved in uh, discussions about this particular game and about video games as a legitimate form of entertainment. So please leave your comments below. And as always, if you have uh, uh, any requests about topics for us to cover, games for us to review, please just let us know. We'd be glad to do that. Until the next time we do this, I'll see you later.